In fluid statics, we have studied when the fluid is at rest, we have studied different properties of fluid. Similarly, to study fluid which is moving, that is fluid dynamics, we have to consider two mathematical models, that is Lagrangian model and Eulerian model. Fluid dynamics. Fluid dynamics is a part of fluid mechanics in which the fluid flows from one place to another place. During this, okay, it undergoes change in displacement, velocity as well as accelerations. So fluid dynamics is actually classified into two parts. Kinematics and kinetics. Now, what do you mean by kinematics? A kinematics is a branch of fluid mechanics in which we do not consider effect of force as well as mass. Effect of force and mass is not considered in kinematics. If you closely observe this, what is m into a in this spelling? You can see mass into acceleration which is actually the force and m itself in the spelling is occurring. Actually in kinematics, in kinematics you have m into a but we do not consider the effect of force as well as mass but in kinetics you don't have m into a but we consider the effect of force and mass now to study fluid dynamics rather let us study fluid kinematics. Now kinematics is a branch in which we do not consider the effect of force and mass. Now during this process we should have some mathematical model to analyze this part. So first we are going to consider the approach given by Langrangian. Langrangian approach. Now imagine you are running a marathon. Whenever you are running a marathon, imagine you have a cell phone attached to your arm in which at a particular instant of time what is exactly happening is it is calculating your displacement, it is calculating your velocity and calculating your acceleration. Sometimes during an entire path of a marathon, what happens is, okay, you do not run at a constant velocity. When you do not run at a constant velocity, either your velocity increases or the velocity decreases. That increase and decrease in velocity during the stretch of an entire marathon is recorded in your cell phone. That means, Similar to you, in Langrangian approach, what we do is, we consider each molecule of the fluid which is in motion and we calculate displacement, velocity and acceleration of the each fluid particle. But this entire process of calculating displacement, velocity and acceleration becomes very difficult. Hence, Okay, this entire approach can be summed up into one vector formula that is its own displacement rather we can say its position vector, vector is represented by an arrow is a function of its spatial coordinates. Now what do you mean by spatial coordinates that are rectangular coordinates that is x, y as well as z that are spatial coordinates and the fourth coordinate is time. So it is a function of x, y, z and time. Mind you this is 
position vector is a function of x, y, z and time. These three are spatial coordinates. This is a time coordinate. Now during this process, we should always consider the spatial coordinates with respect to origin that is x0, y0 and z0. Now what do you mean by origin? That means value of x is 0 when t is equals to 0. Similarly value of y is equals to 0 when t is equals to 0. And similarly value of z is equals to 0 when t is equals to 0. That means its position vector is a function of x0, y0, z0 and time. Now, this is given in Lagrangian approach. Now, this will be for each and every particle of the fluid. Now, as we have studied this entire part, we will go back to velocity. Next part will be velocity in which first we will write down your displacement is equals to x into i cap that is unit vector along x axis plus y j cap plus z k cap that are i j and k are unit vectors along x y and z whereas x y and z are corresponding coordinates of that entire fluid from its initial position if you differentiate this part you will get what is velocity but mind you that since s is dependent or function of x, y, z and t rather x0, y0, z0 and t its velocity has three distinct velocities that is its velocity is a function of its x velocity, y velocity and z velocity. This v is a function of velocity along x direction, velocity along y direction and velocity along z direction. Rather instead of v z we can write this as w. We can write this as w since we have already considered z over here. So it is a function of u, v and w. So in vector form this capital V can be written as small u x i cap plus v j cap plus w k cap. Now u, v and w are its velocity along x, y and z directions. Now your u can be written as that is velocity along x direction can be written as that is dx by dt. Similarly, your v can be written as dy by dt and your w can be written as dz by dt. Now, what do you mean by dx, dy, dz? That is change in displacement with respect to time, change in displacement along y direction with respect to time and change in z direction with respect to time. Similarly, v is equals to ui cap plus vj cap plus wk cap. Now you know that s is a function that is displacement is a function of x, y, z and t. So your u will be also a function of x, y, z and t. And what is u actually? u is velocity along x direction. So over here u is a function of x, y, z and t. Similarly v is a function of x, y, z and t. And W is also a function of X, Y, Z and T. Hence, all these three quantities are function of spatial coordinates and time. Due, due to this, the next quantity that is acceleration is dependent upon your velocity, 
displacement velocity displacement and it is dependent upon time so now the entire acceleration can be summed up into one entire equation for example we take acceleration that is total acceleration is equals to ax i cap plus ay j cap plus az k cap now what is ax over here ax is acceleration along x direction similarly ay is acceleration along y direction az is acceleration along z direction i j k are the position vectors now your ax that is acceleration along x direction can be given as a function of x y z and t now acceleration over here is a function of x y z and t so we have to use over here partial derivatives why because acceleration is dependent upon one or more variable or rather more than one variable due to this acceleration over here can be written as ax is equals to dou u by dou t that is change in acceleration along x direction with time plus this can be written as u into dou u by dou x plus v into dou u by dou y plus w into dou u by dou z now since this is acceleration along x direction this is change in velocity along x direction with time and with the corresponding displacement along x y and z direction similarly your a y can be written as this is dou v by dou t plus u into dou v by dou x plus v into dou v by dou y plus w into dou v by dou z that is change in velocity along y direction with time and change in velocity with respect to x y as well as z similarly a z can be written as do w by do t plus u into do w by do x plus v into do w by do y plus w into do w by do z now these are your individual acceleration along x y and z direction the total acceleration can be written as a will be equals to square root of that is ax square plus a y square plus a z square in magnitude similar to the velocity which can be also written as velocity can be also written as v equals to that is square root of vx square plus vy square plus vz square so now we know what is your acceleration that is change in your corresponding velocity with time as well as x y and z and in its magnitude similarly we know what is your total velocity that is v is equals to square root of vx square plus vy square plus vz square now let us check out the next method that is eulerian method in eulerian method it is one of the most easiest method in lagrangian method what we did we consider we consider one fluid particle which is actually moving along an entire space 
during which we had to calculate its displacement, velocity and acceleration at each and every moment of time. Due to this, what used to happen is this entire process is very tedious to calculate all the displacement velocities and uh, and velocities and acceleration for all the individual particle. Hence, the next approach which we take into consideration is Eulerian approach. In Eulerian approach, what we study is we take a system in which the fluid flows from one part to another part. This is the flow of the fluid. During this, we consider one section at this part. Let us consider this as section 1 1. And over here, we will consider a section 2 2. We will calculate the displacement, velocity, acceleration of the entire fluid at position 1, and then we will calculate the displacement, velocity and acceleration at position 2. So, this explains your Eulerian method. The basic difference between Eulerian method and Lagrangian method is, first, in Eulerian method, we take a section. On that section, we calculate displacement, velocity or acceleration at that point. But at point 2, also we consider displacement, velocity and acceleration but in Lagrangian method each and every particle at a very instant of time we calculate its velocity displacement and acceleration so in fluid flow rather in kinematics of fluid the only approach which we will be considering that is your Eulerian approach in Eulerian approach we have to consider section at the different parts of the fluid.